Hello. Gosh, it's really cold in the studio today. So today you've got me cold in the studio and last time you had me cold outside. So it's kind of the time of year for it. So um, if I'm looking like I've had too much Christmas dinner, it's possibly the case, but it could be because I've got even more layers on today because it is so cold and it's snowing here. So what am I going to talk to you about today? Well, interestingly um, and uh, scarily, um, I am very close to having to finish uh, my painting in the studio, ready for this exhibition. Uh, the exhibition is in eight weeks time. So this week and part of uh, and, and next week is, is literally my last chance. And obviously that's just a huge amount of, of pressure. Uh, and it kind of doesn't work to say I've got to finish so many paintings by that point in time, because maybe I will be able to finish paintings, but maybe they won't be what I want, etc, etc. So I wanted to talk a little bit about mindset today and in, in as part of that, the importance of play. And I've talked about play before, but now we're, it's in a different context. It's to keep that spirit alive so that your paintings just don't become an absolute battleground because that's really not what any of us really want. And so it occurred to me that I was sort of setting myself some impossible deadlines. So what I will say is that I'm on the last group, the panoramic group, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that as well, about the, um, the pros and cons of having that important group last. Uh, so... Uh, what, where I'm at is I have some, uh, la I'm, I'm nearly at the, at the sort of number of paintings I need. This last group, I have uh, three larger ones and three smaller ones. And uh, the larger ones, I've got two finished and one close, but you know, it, it's still a way to go in some respects. And I need to, to, well, potentially I need to finish it. So here's my mindset change. Two, is enough. Two is fine. Ideally, I'd get have three and as a stretch target, I might want some of the small ones as well. But that's not, my mindset is just the two and anything else is a bonus because otherwise the pressure in itself will mean that, you know, it just doesn't work out. And the importance of play becomes absolutely fundamental. So before I do any work on any of the paintings, I'm warming up. And in a minute, I'm going to turn the camera around and just share with you some simple studies that I'm doing to do that. And uh, that is becomes really the focus of play and experimenting and seeing what happens. Something may turn up, something may not turn up. Now, that's just I just briefly want to mention to you about the panoramics. Um, the, the panoramic view is arguably the fundamentally important aspect of this whole body of work. It's the panoramic view brings all the types of landscapes together, uh, the moors, the valleys, the, wood, the, the woodland and so on. But I've left it till last. And that is part of a problem in some respects. Uh, it, to be honest, I was doing seasonal works and it kind of was by necessity. Um, the problem with that, of course, now is under extreme pressure, yet yeah, it's an important group. The big advantage is that this isn't the end. I'm not just saying, right, this is this. It's all nice, nice, uh, neat package of the work for this exhibition. That's it, start afresh. It's kind of like the beginning of my work on the panoramics. And therefore, subsequent to the, they, some of them may not make it yet, they might not be finished, but it's the start point for further work. And that, I think, is the real positive uh, mindset that I want to sort of take out of this, really, that I'm literally, these, these panoramics are literally probably going to be quite an important thing moving forward. Certainly, I've got a lot of material for the monthly mark making. I've only just started dipping into that and using that for this group of work. So that will, that exploration will continue with the panoramics. And so that's, you know, a really uh, exciting uh, part of it. And that's an important part of the mindset as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the camera around, share with you um, how I'm doing these, these studies and also share some examples of what I've been working on through the, the days of this week and then what I will be continuing to work on so you get an idea of uh, of them and uh, we'll take it from there. So I, I need to keep the play alive and I think I've shared with you quite a lot about how I try and introduce you know play and experimentation at the front end of the paintings anyway and sometimes that happens more than others but 
for now, it's so critical that I keep that kind of play and exploration alive. Otherwise, I'm just going to get over fiddly with the paintings. So um, what I thought I'd show you is one of the, and I've shown you this sort of thing before, but I want to do it now in the context of this panoramic view and all of the work that I've been doing and sharing with you over time, uh, including obviously that monthly mark making. And so I thought I'd just sort of refresh your memory and sort of share this with you, even if you've seen me do small studies before. Because the small studies that I do really vary in terms of their, the kind of mindset of doing them. Although I, what I would say that the thing that's in common with however I do these small studies is that they're quick, there's no time to think, it's two minutes or three minutes, uh, quick, uh, spontaneous studies. So what I'll do is I'll just talk to you about how I kind of do it. So this is actually a piece of A3 cartridge paper I've got. It's uh, just the, the C white, actually the C white 220 uh, GSM grams. So quite thick and sturdy. And all I've done is I've kind of folded it into eight already. And then I very simply, because this isn't about being too precious anyway, so I'm not being wonderfully careful, although I've... Okay, so I've got my paper. And the paint I have, I'm not going to go through it in detail. All I'm going to say is it's some pre-mixed colours that reflect the paintings that I'm working on at the moment. So um, there's a lot of transparent colour here. There's a deep, dark, purpley, um, heathery colour. There's a tanny, browny, burnt sienna colour that I've mixed. There's a lovely, rich, warm yellow orange which is made up from uh, indian yellow there's a turquoisey green that i've made from the indian yellow and some pathalo blue to which i've added a little bit of red to flatten it a little bit and some white uh, and then there's a kind of a mixed uh, buff color which is actually some indian yellow mixed with white so just a mix of the colors that i'm using in general are on my current canvases which are about the panoramic views and so what i'm now going to do is I'm going to just do a quick study just to show um, or, you know, sort of illustrate how I kind of go about these really. And what I'm doing is I'm picking marks that are from that landscape, from my mark making, and I'm kind of plonking them, as Emily Ball would say, I'm plonking them onto these, um, onto the paper. So I'm picking them and just, you know, sort of plonking them onto the paper and making some kind of uh, a composition with them. So I'll get going. Um, I'm not doing anything in particular um, apart from what I've just described um, and it's really quick and loose and all I'm trying to do really is to have some of the marks that I'm currently using in my work. And I might use pencil as well. I use pencil quite a lot in my work. Um, this is an intense pencil. And what I'm doing really is to just try and repeat some of the marks. And I'm trying to kind of keep it on time, although I'm using the same clock that I'm using for the video. So that gets a bit confusing. And I'm sure that you can see, if you've followed me for a while, you'll be able to see some of these very typical marks of mine, the dots and the lines and some of the wiggles. And I'm going to leave that one there. It's not a particularly brilliant one, but it gives you the idea of what I'm trying to do. And it's usually a combination of a solid mark um, and then the lines and the, and, and the other types of marks, the dots, uh, the big loops that I do, uh, the, the scratchy lines and so on. Um, and I'm just trying to create um, that sort of combination of the marks, really. That's all I'm trying to do with these. And I often do these as a start point uh, before I get into painting, especially as I'm developing the painting and I'm wanting to keep it playful and I'm maybe focusing more on marks and tie it, using lines to tie the composition together, if that makes sense. So I'm just using these as a little bit of a freewheeling. <laughs>
list. Here are some of the recent uh, small studies that I've been doing. And I've just put them out on the desk so you can just see. And I kind of are always shuffling them around and looking at different ones and then replacing ones I no longer like or no longer seem to serve me and then put different ones out. And sometimes I just put them all away. And sometimes I just look at them and look at them subsequent to having a painting more or less finished and can see how these somehow, even though I haven't been looking at them whilst I've been painting, sort of somehow reenact themselves in the painting in some form. So I think they're a really, really valuable um, thing to do. And of course, it's so important to uh, warm up, even though sometimes we convince ourselves we don't have time for that. It's absolutely critical. Um, and I think that over time, that you just um, build up that awareness of how it helps you. And it's not a linear process, so you don't necessarily know what it's going to do for you. But all I can say is from the year um, where I've just been developing all of this um, group of paintings for the exhibition, where I haven't or have forgotten to play, it's really um, pulled me back. And I've had to kind of re evaluate, reflect and, and kind of come back to this sort of approach really. And obviously there's so many different approaches. Uh, I just find this simple studies one quite useful and very uh, flexible in terms of what you can uh, do with it. So I just want to, I've also been uh, thinking about how to keep myself going uh, over the next uh, week or two whilst I finish. And so this um, statement that I've now stuck on my wall, it's rather large now, I'm, I'm just realising, this has some resonance for me at this moment in time. What makes you finish is not discipline, but self-forgiveness. And although you probably can't quite see the, it's Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, and she, of course, is the author who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Um, but that, I think, is there's a lot to that, actually, because sometimes you just want to um, get to a point where you're not necessarily at in your work. And, and, and that will come, but it won't necessarily come in, the, in, in this painting. And I think that it's important to kind of recognise that. So uh, that's my kind of takeaway, really. And that is what I'm sort of holding on to as I come to uh, the end of this group of work for the exhibition. So I just thought I'd share it with you. And I just thought I'd end the video by sharing with you the three panoramics that I was talking about. They're all uh, 80 centimetres by 50 centimetres. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, I have finished now the third of three and so I am still working on some smaller ones uh, but I have my three and the reason they're on the floor like this uh, balanced in this way is because I've painted the sides and they are ready for varnishing so thanks very much for watching please do uh, keep following as I build up to the exhibition and uh, please do like and subscribe and comments as ever are always welcome and love to have a chat so thanks a lot and bye-bye